And talking about titrations last time, uh, we talked about two different types of titrations. Uh, we talked about a strong acid, a strong acid and strong base titration. And uh, again, in that titration, we are uh, adding a strong acid, strong base. And in that titration, uh, we're starting with the strong acid in the flask. We are adding the base to it. And again, it gives that kind of typical S type of titration curve that, are, that we normally will see, volume of base. Here, uh, as we talked about um, a couple of parts on it, when we first start, it is just a strong acid, which means that if you want the pH of it, you could go right into uh, the pH equation since we haven't added anything. Um, once we do start adding, if you remember what we talked about sort of in the second region, um, we do need to do an ice table. And again, remember that pretty much all through titration, since we're constantly adding volume, uh, we do need to do that ice table in moles. Again, moles will remain constant. Molarity will continue to change. Uh, so we definitely want to do moles in that ice table. Once we do that ice table, really the purpose of that ice table in this type of titration uh, is to really figure out the concentration of your strong acid. You'll still have the strong acid left over at that point. Once you do that first ice table in moles, you should convert it to molarity by using the total volume. And then you could go into the pH uh, sort of formula. When we reach the equivalence point in this type of titration, sort of that third point, if you will, um, what occurs is the equivalence point is the point where the moles of the acid will equal the moles of the base. And really in this type of titration, because we're reacting a strong acid and a strong base together, what that essentially means is what we will have left is a neutral salt. Basically, we'll just have a salt left over at that point. It should be neutral because it comes from really a strong acid and a strong base. And <clears throat> that means that the pH in this type of titration, we would expect to be seven there at the equivalence point. Once we go past the equivalence point, which is sort of that fourth part of the titration curve, uh, we're pretty much have now, since this point here at the equivalence point, the moles of the acid equals the moles of the base. At this point, we pretty much have used up all of the acid, which means as we transition into this fourth part of the curve, we're really just dumping in strong base. And since we're just dumping in strong base at that point, that's going to be the major contributor to the pH. And that will also give us our OH minus concentration and then give us our POH into our pH. So again, most titration curves sort of have four distinct parts and they do change depending on sort of what's going on in that titration. So we saw another titration curve which looked very similar and this was of a weak acid and strong base. And here again, we're starting with the weak acid in the kind of beaker or flask or whatever you may be using there. If I can get it right there. And we're adding again from the burette uh, the strong base to it. Now, this titration curve also has sort of the same four parts, if you will. Um, so the first part kind of before we start it, and it's a little bit different because in this case, we're actually starting with a weak acid, uh, which means this is really a Ka type problem. So you need an ice table, you use the molarity because we haven't added anything at this point. Um, and then you can solve for X, X will be your H plus concentration. You then can put it into your um, pH equation at that point. Kind of that second part here of this type of titration, it does require an ice table. In this case, the ice table will yield you really a buffer that's going to be made as a result of that part of the titration. First ice table does need to be in moles. Uh, once you do that, you should convert it back to molarity. And because it's a buffer, you have two options. You could either then do a second ice table if you wanted to, 
or you could Henderson Hasselbach at that point. Um, and you will have sort of a buffer region as we talked about happening in this area. In the equivalence point, also a little bit different, we will again be left with a salt. The difference is though that salt will go through hydrolysis and it goes through hydrolysis again because it comes from a weak acid and it's the weak acid part that will go through hydrolysis and it will react with water as a base, which means it will accept the H plus and it ultimately will produce hydroxide. And that's why we know at the equivalence point in this type of titration actually should be basic because of that hydrolysis sort of problem uh, that's occurring. So that requires at least uh, probably two uh, ice tables at that point. First ice table is to really just figure out what is the concentration of the salt. And the second ice table is a hydrolysis type of problem uh, that you would need to do that would allow you to get to the pH. Lastly here, kind of that fourth part of the titration curve, same sort of situation occurring as it did on the left there. You pretty much have now passed the equivalence point, which means you've really used up all the acid you started with in this titration. Um, you're just again dumping in a bunch of strong base. So you need at least an ice table there done in moles. Uh, the purpose of that table again is to get the concentration of the strong base that's left over. We also ignore the hydrolysis that's happening with the salt at this point because between the two, the strong base is obviously much stronger and the major contributor that would uh, contribute to the pH at this point. Um, obviously that'll get you your POH again and then to your pH. Any questions on those titrations that we've talked about so far? Okay. Then let us uh, talk about the third type of titration. And this is a titration of a strong acid with a weak base. So this titration is a little bit different. Uh, we're actually starting over here with the weak base, we're adding the acid to it. Um, so what we got going on in terms of orientation in your burette, it's actually gonna be your acid down in the beaker will be your base. And because we're really starting with the base in this case, we do see the titration curve looking a little different. It's really flipped on its head we are actually starting at a high pH because we're starting with a base and we're rolling ourselves down to a lower pH because we're adding acid to it. The other two titrations we talked about, we were starting with a acid, low pH, and ending at sort of basic range because we were adding base to it. So let's talk about sort of the same parts of this titration curve as what we've seen previously. So kind of that first part there before we begin, in this case, really the only thing that we have in that beaker before we begin is something like NH3. NH3 is a weak base. So if we wanted to figure out the pH of that solution, you would do really a KB type problem here where you would use molarity because you haven't added anything in this case. And these would be X's. This again would go into our KB value. When we solve for X, in this particular case, X would again equal the hydroxide concentration, not the H plus concentration. That means probably first is the POH and then to the pH in this particular case. That is also why we would expect the pH here to be high to begin with. Again, really we're starting with a base so we can see a basic pH and it should be coming down. Any questions at that point? Now, if we kind of look at the uh, second part of this titration here, kind of from where we began, get that right, from where we began all the way to right before we hit the equivalence point there, we do have obviously a chemical reaction sort of taking place. Uh, very similar to some of those reactions that we talked about in the other ones. So let's talk about what happens in this case here, if we get there. there we go. 
So part number two here, which would be before the equivalence point, we would get that reaction to occur between hydrochloric acid in this example, plus our ammonia, which is our weak base. It is going to basically generate NH4 plus and Cl minus. You could, if you wanted to put those guys together, uh, you could kind of keep them apart. I'm gonna keep them apart just to, so we could kind of illustrate a couple of things, but they could write just ammonium chloride if you wanted to in this case. Again here, uh, acid donating over H plus. This would have to be done in moles as obviously we are adding uh, hydrochloric acid. So just making up the numbers like I did last time, if we started with uh, four moles of ammonia, we know we're before the equivalence point. So the same meaning is what we did last time. That means whatever we are adding, which is in this case, this guy, again, we're starting with this guy in the beaker or the flask, it needs to be less moles. So that would be say, for example, two moles. Again, just making up the number, zero over here and zero over here. Change in this case, because we have less moles of our HCl at this point, it is the limiting reagent. So we'll do that, we'll do this, and we'll do this in this case. That means when we were there, we got this guy, we got two moles of this guy, two moles of this guy, and kind of two moles of this guy. At this point, like we talked about a number of times, you should definitely take the total volume, which would be the volume of, in this case, HCl you added, and the volume of NH3 that you started with, and really convert everybody back into uh, molarity. So again, otherwise you're gonna come across a lot of calculations as we talked about, that you'll probably get the wrong answer if you kind of don't do that move. So. First ice table moles immediately after that first ice table, just turn it back into molarity and you should be in good shape. Any questions on the ice table here? Now, we talked a lot about if you're not sure where you are in the titration or what should happen next, uh, the actual ice table can be helpful. So if we just kind of box around everything, you know, we got kind of going on let's talk about these sort of three things. We have chloride here and from our earlier conversations, we know chloride is a neutral salt. So you don't have to worry about it. And in fact, yeah, I probably wouldn't put numbers there at all. So what does that leave us? It leaves us NH3 and NH4 plus. You hopefully can sense that they are related to each other. The difference there is one H plus that means that this again is a buffer. So what we are left with at this point are is a buffer. And that means again, probably the best move would go into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation here to get our pH. You alternatively could ice table again if you were going to do this a couple different ways, you could do the ice table, but uh, maybe you might just do like the KA version of this, if you like. You do the KB version, then convert it back to uh, pH at that point as well. This would though be a basic buffer at this point. as we would expect. And as we can see here, when we look at the titration curve, still basic all the way through here, pretty much in this sort of buffer region, if you will. Any questions on that? Obviously, as you get closer to the equivalence point, we are dropping into acidic, but a vast majority of this area will end up being a basic type buffer. Any questions on that there? All right, as we approach the equivalence point, which would be kind of part number three here, we see the same thing that we saw on the other curves. We do go vertical. The only difference is we're going vertically down, if you will. So we're kind of going vertically down, which much like the other sort of conversation that we had, uh, 
it does not take a lot of volume to change the pH a lot. And that's typically what we see. Um, we saw the jump up to the equivalence point and then past the equivalence point. Here, because we're adding acid, we see kind of the drop jump to the equivalence point and then another drop after the equivalence point. And again, that's very common in titrations. Uh, you're kind of at that teetering point, if you will, where you know, you're basically buffering it through this region here. And then you kind of are breaking through the buffer as you head towards the equivalence point. So that's why we kind of see that jump in pH. Kind of like if you blew through your buffer in terms of its buffer capacity, it's able to maintain the pH, maintain the pH. But again, we're kind of doing, you know, what we talked about, you know, with buffers at this point, you know, we, we have that sort of buffer happening and there's an acid part and a base part of that buffer. In this case, we keep adding acid. And what we're doing is, you know, we're burning through the base part, but it's a titration. So we keep adding acid and we keep adding acid. And before you know it, right, it's a sort of buffer region. We're down to only like a very small base part as we're approaching here, right? And at that point, you know, you burn through it because you're titrating and you're still adding more acid and adding more acid. And then we get this jump in pH because it's no longer able to maintain that buffer, basically no longer buffering at that point. Any questions on that? So what happens when we get to sort of this third part here of the titration curve at the equivalence point? So let's talk a little bit about that at the third part, which is at the equivalence point, we are obviously still going to have our reaction. So we're gonna have our hydrochloric acid plus our ammonia going to make NH4 plus and again, Cl minus. Again, this is what we're adding. This is what we're starting with. We do want to do this in moles. So I'm going to go with four moles made up number because we're at the equivalence point. In this case, we should have the same number of moles of our acid, zero this guy. And since I already know this is neutral, I'm going to actually ignore the chloride at this point since obviously I already determined that sort of up there. Change is going to be minus four moles because you can't really pick the wrong number since they're both the same. That means zero, zero, and four moles of this guy. Again, as we've talked about a number of times, we do want to convert that back to molarity at this point. So what do we got going on here in this part of the titration? Again, if we look at our ice table in terms of what is left, we basically have a salt left, which is similar to what we had kind of going on there in the previous titrations. The difference though is this salt comes from NH3. NH3 is a weak base, which means that this salt will go through hydrolysis. So what we're going to get at this time is that part of the salt going through hydrolysis, which means it's going to react with water. And because it comes from a base, the salt here will act as an acid and donate its H plus over. And when it does, it makes where it came from. And it also makes H3O plus. So at this point in the titration, just by writing the correct formula here, we should know several things. First off, we should know that the pH at this point should be acidic because we're producing H3O plus. We also know if we're going to do our calculation here, we probably should be using a Ka value as well. So this would then be an ice table done in molarity. And we would use the equilibrium molarity of this guy as our starting amount here. These guys would be zeros, minus x plus x plus x molarity, if I get it right, minus x, x and x. This will go into our Ka 
we would solve for x. x in this case would equal the H3O plus concentration. So it does equal the H plus concentration, which means we can get into a pH. So at the equivalence point in this type of titration, much like what we saw in the previous titration, we will be left with a salt that came from a weak base. Because it came from a weak base, it will go through hydrolysis. The difference is here it's going to be a basic hydrolysis or basic salt that's, I'm sorry, it's, I keep saying basic. It will be an acidic salt. Um, and again, we see that here in our equivalence point. Again, that acidic salt, not basic, as we can see here, pH of 5.28 in this case. So in this titration, uh, when we do reach the equivalence point, when we're adding a strong acid to a weak base, we are expecting it to be acidic because of the hydrolysis that's occurring. Any questions on that part of the titration? All right, so that leaves us really the last part of the titration, which is, you know, past the equivalence point and on. And much like uh, sort of the problems we talked about previously, when you get to this part of the titration, you're really just dumping in, in this case, a lot of acid. So we do get a reaction, same reaction we've been looking at. And because we're past the equivalence point, that essentially means that we started with the NH3 in this case, we're adding the HCl. That means that we should have added more moles of HCl in this case than NH3. That's how, again, how we know we're past the equivalence point. Comparison of simply the moles of each of those guys will allow you to determine that. Again, I'm gonna ignore chloride as it's not really gonna do anything. Remember that when we go past the equivalence point, because we're just dumping in acid at this point, this guy here becomes the excess reagent. This guy here now becomes like the limiting reagent. And the change part is going to actually be the moles of the base. That means we end up with two moles of this guy, none of this guy, and four moles of this guy. At this point, we're going to convert back to molarity using our total volume and our titration at that point. So we wanna think about what we got going on that's left. We have this NH4+, plus, which clearly we've seen previously, will go through hydrolysis and produce H+. Plus. We also have some HCl there. Remember that even though you got two numbers, this is not a buffer. They're not related to each other at all. And at this point, much like what we did in the previous problem, the major contributor to the pH is really not going to be the salt, even though it's sort of doing its thing. And that's because we have the presence here of this strong acid. And, you know, much like when we go past the equivalence point with the strong base, with the strong acid, it pretty much just needs to go for a swim and it's good to go. It's going to make H plus very, very quickly. So this is gonna be the major contributor at this point to the pH. What that means is essentially this guy right here will be our H plus concentration. And that means that we could go right into our pH equation. We definitely would expect it obviously to be pretty acidic and that's what we do see here as we go from the equivalence point remember we're kind of coming out of a buffer here that we kind of burst through in terms of keeping adding acid so we burst through the buffer it's all a big jump in ph and now we're just continuously adding acid to it and we're adding more and more h plus so we see another jump and obviously we're ending very acidic here because essentially we're just dumping in strong acid into our titration beaker or flask or whatever we may be using. Any questions on those four parts of the titration curve? They are this titration curve and the previous one we looked at, which was the weak base and um, 
strong um i'll say it again <laughs> that's wrong but it was the weak acid and strong base titration they're pretty much the same titration curve they're just inverted of each other again one you're starting with an acid and adding the base this one you're going opposite but they have the same four sort of spots they're actually the same calculations really they're just instead of a acidic uh, buffer like we have in the previous titration we talked about you end up with an acidic uh, a basic buffer and vice versa instead of ending sort of basic because you're adding base you end up acidic at the bottom so they're really kind of mirror images of each other i guess in that sense you know opposites of each other but they're the same sort of four calculations as we talked about last time really important when you do titrations to make sure that you know where you are in the curve. A lot of times it could help you know what type of calculation you should be doing uh, before you begin it. And that's very, very helpful. Any questions on any of that there? Okay. Okay, so we got a, a kind of big titration example here. Uh, we're going to titrate uh, 100 milliliters of nitrous acid with uh, sodium hydroxide. So again, for orientation purposes, what that means is the sodium hydroxide is up in the burette and we are adding that to our nitrous acid. We want to know what is the pH at the initial solution before the titration begins, basically. So that's before it begins. after you added 80 milliliters of the base and at the equivalence point, and what is the pH after you added 105 milliliters of the base, Ka value is 4.5 times 10 to the minus four. All right, so there, since there's several parts, this is a good example, kind of walks you through a lot of the different things that we talked about uh, in titration curves. So why don't you take several, several moments here uh, to work through this and again, hopefully come up. We need four different answers. We're at four different sort of parts of the curve and see what you come up with. Okay, uh, so we're back. Hopefully you've made some pretty good progress on parts of these. But I didn't want to kind of go over them, make sure everybody's sort of on the same path. So let us start with, uh, you know, the type of titration that we're dealing with. And we're doing a nitrous acid with uh, sodium hydroxide. It does give us a Ka value for nitrous acid. So that automatically tells us, obviously, this is a weak acid. And we're adding a strong base to it. So that should give you visions of the second titration curve. I'm very badly drawn there. Uh, that we uh, sort of looked at. And we're basically going to kind of go through the different parts here. So first off, part A is the initial solution. So before the titration begins, as we talked about, you know, you're kind of here on the titration curve. And that means that really the only thing that we have going on there is our weak acid. So because it's a weak acid, we would want to do really just a Ka type problem. So we'll start with that. That is uh, A here really before we start. So at that point, what we're going to do is just our weak acid that's going to dissociate into H plus and NO2 minus. Ka value here, 4.5 times 10 to the minus four. We could do this ice table in molarity since we have not added anything. So we could do 0.1 moles, our molar. Uh, zero, zero, we can also do X's, obviously, minus X, plus X, plus X. That means 0 0.1 minus X, X, and X. Any questions so far on the ice table here? All right, at this point, we're going to go into our Ka. So our Ka would be our products over our reactants. Again, that's going to equal our 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. We're going to put in our guys in there. It gets us s squared 0 0.1 minus x 
equals 4.5 times 10 to the minus four. You could try your assumption here and assume that X is equal to zero, gets you X squared 0 0.1 is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the minus four. Multiplying that to the other side, 0.1 times 4.5 to the minus four, doing a little square root action on it. Uh, going to get us an X value of uh, 0.00671. We do want to divide that by 0.1 times it by 100. And then I believe we have sad news there at that point. That is going to be 6.7%, which is a bad assumption based off of our 5% rule, as we've talked about before. That means basically we need to go back, technically speaking, to here and solve it, obviously, using the quadratic formula. So distributing the bottom to the other side, going to get us uh, 4.5 to the minus four times 0 0.1 uh, gets us, switch this here so not so many zeros. There we go. Gets us uh, 4.5 times 10 to the minus five minus 4.5 times 10 to the minus four X. We're going to bring everybody to the other side, giving us X squared plus 4.5 times 10 to the minus four X minus uh, 4.5 times 10 to the minus five is equal to zero. That's gonna go into our minus B plus or minus the square root B squared minus four AC divided by two A. Uh, putting in some numbers there, minus 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 plus or minus. If we do the uh, square root part there, 4.5 to the minus 4, we need to square that. We then going to subtract uh, 4 times 8 to the minus 4. Looks like uh, inside the square root, if you kind of clean up everything, 1.80 times 10 to the minus four, we do the square root of it, like 1.34 times 10 to the minus two, that's gonna be divided by two basically, minus uh, 4.5 to the minus four plus our 1.34 to the minus two divided by two gets us an X value of uh, 6.48 times 10 to the minus three. Or if we do the subtraction, we really don't need to complete it, but if we did the subtraction, we will get obviously a negative number for our second number. And that's minus 6.93 times 10 to the minus three. Obviously it cannot be the negative number here because we're looking for X and X would equal our H plus concentration. That means that that there should be our X value and that would equal the concentration of H plus in this case, which means we open up this titration with a pH of Punch in the right numbers, hopefully 2.19. Any questions on any part of that calculation there? Again, as I talked about before, you should recognize this calculation really as a KA problem like we did before. So, you know, it is a, a problem that we've seen before. All right, then let us look at part B. Part B is we're going to actually start the titration. So we're going to drop in there um, 80 milliliters of the base. And we want to know, you know what is the pH at that point. So let's take a look at B. B here again, since we've started the titration, uh, we will have obviously our reaction between our nitrous acid in this case, plus our sodium hydroxide. going to yield us some sodium nitrite plus some water. And just to make sure here, we are adding 
80 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide that has a molarity of 0.1 molar to 100 milliliters of our HNO2 that also has a 0.1 molar uh, molarity there. So we obviously need to do this in moles. So to get our moles, we would take for our nitrous acid 0.1, which is converting our 100 milliliters into liters times 0.1. And that's going to give us 0 0.01 moles. For our sodium hydroxide, 0 0.08, converting that into liters times 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.008 and zero. Any questions on how I got moles? Again, just taking the volume converted to liters times the molarity, right? Okay, so if you're not sure where you are in the titration curve, just from looking at the problem, you can do the same thing that we've talked about. This is what we're starting with. Uh, this is what we're adding. And in comparison of the moles of these two, we see that what we're adding is less than what we started with. So since the equivalence point, and they're equal to each other, this would definitely tell us we are before the equivalence point. So again, we know we're before the equivalence point. That also means that we the change should be our limiting reagent, which is the sodium hydroxide in this case. That will get us 0 0.01 minus 0 0.008, 0 0.002 moles, nothing here, and 0 0.008 moles. As we spoke about at this point in the titration or in this point in the calculation, after we do this first table in moles, we do want to convert it back to molarity. It's really good practice. Molarity would be total volume at this point. So we started with 100 milliliters of our acid. We added 80 milliliters of our base. That's 180 milliliters total volume, which means we would convert these guys by dividing by 0.18 liters each. Any questions on that there? Giving us a 0 0.0111 molar. And on the other side there, zero point zero four 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 molar. I like the numbers. Now, again, we know we're before the equivalence point, and because we're before the equivalence point, we actually should know what type of problem this was before we started. It should really be a buffer problem at this point in this type of titration. If I didn't know that, I could use my ice table to figure that out. I am left with nitrous acid, which is a weak acid, and I'm left with sodium nitrite, which is a conjugate base. These two guys are related to each other. These two guys are still a buffer at this point. So as we would expect in this part of the titration, we have made a buffer. So we have two options we could ice table it, but probably much easier to just go into our Henders and Osselbach. Since it is a buffer, we do need our pKa value, and that would be minus the log of the Ka. And that is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Giving us a three, three, five, looks like. In terms of our pKa value, that means 3.35 plus the log of the base. Again, hopefully from the Ka value, you recognize this as the acid. By default, this is our base. And that means that we do want to go with 0 0.0444 divided by 0 0.0111. That's going to give us 
That's going to give us a pH at this point in the titration of it looks like 3.95. Any questions on that there? So where are we at this point in the titration? We're starting to move across the titration curve here. So obviously we started at a pH of whatever it was, 2.19, I think. We're now at 3.95. So we're progressing you know, up the curve here, again, in this region, as we would expect. This would be our sort of buffer region. So we're kind of moving ourselves up. Any questions so far through part B? All right, continuing on then to part C is we want to know, you know, we're going to be up here at this point. What is that pH at the equivalence point? So let's take a look at what we got going there. So C is equivalence point. So it tells us we're definitely at the equivalence point. Here again, uh, we have 100 milliliters of the nitrous acid at 0 0.1 molar. We're adding our sodium hydroxide at 0 0.1 molar. We're at the equivalence point, so it doesn't really tell us the volume. So let's talk about a couple ways we can sort of figure that out. So let's talk about two sort of ways we can figure it out. We definitely are going to have our reaction here. Um, again, it's going to give us the same result as what we had previously. We do need to do this in moles. So for sure, we know the moles of our nitrous acid, which is 0.1 times 0.1, so 0 0.01 moles. Now, because it's the equivalence point, the moles of the acid will equal the moles of the base. So if you want to continue on with the calculation, we know that this number should be the same. So by knowing this number should be the same, we know how many moles of the sodium hydroxide we would need using our molarity equation, which is moles per liter and solving for liters, which would be moles divided by molarity. 0 0.01 moles divided by 0.1 molar tells us that in terms of the volume to reach the equivalence point, we would need 0 0.1 liters of sodium hydroxide, which is 100 milliliters. So that's one way you could get there to figure out that actually we need to add 100 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide. You could also use M1 equal M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. Since it's a one-to-one -one relationship here, that's all good as well. You could do your 100 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar is equal to 0 0.1 molar times our volume, which would be our base volume. Solving for V2 would give you 100 milliliters of your sodium hydroxide. So there are multiple ways you could kind of determine the volume. You may be wondering, well, why do I need the volume? You're going to need the volume to convert back to molarity right after we do this table. So you do need to kind of figure that out. Any questions on that? All right, so rolling through this table here, zero on that. Can't mess up here since there's only one number involved. That's got to be our change. That means at equilibrium, like we would expect, at the equivalence point, we got nothing left over of either one. We got 0 0.1 moles of this guy. Here again is where the volume is important. Now that we know we used 100 milliliters to get there, and we started with 100 milliliters. Our total volume that we've added is 200 milliliters, or 0.2 liters. So again, that's why it's critical to be able to figure out the volume so that you can turn this back into molarity at this point. Any questions on that? 
really why it's important to turn it back into molarity at this point is again, we're at the equivalence point in this type of titration. We look at our ice table and we see we have just a salt left over. And as we can predict, this salt will go through hydrolysis and it is the nitrite part of the salt that will do that. The sodium is neutral and it will go through hydrolysis, which is why we actually do need the molarity here and not the moles. Any questions on that there? So as we could predict just from the beginning, we will need a second ice table, which is a hydrolysis reaction because NO2 minus comes from a weak acid it's going to act as a base here, which means it's going to accept the H plus over there. When it does so, it makes where it came from, like we've seen before, and it will produce hydroxide here. And as we would also predict just from seeing that, we should end up at a basic pH at this point. We also need a Kb value going on here. So this will be our molarity from above. These guys would be zeros. These will be X's. Just like a normal hydrolysis type table, 0 0.5 minus X, X and X. Any questions on that table there? This then going to go into our KB because of the hydroxide and that's going to be our nitrous acid and our NO2 minus. What does that mean? Well, this problem obviously gave us just the Ka value of 4.5 times 10 to the minus four. That means to find Kb, that would be Kw times divided by the Ka value. So taking our Kw, which is our one to the minus 14, divided by 4.5 to the minus uh, four, going to give us a KB value of 2.2 times 10 to the minus 11. So putting in our numbers over here, X squared divided by 0 0.5 minus X equals 2.2 times 10 to the minus 11. Here we will assume x is equal to zero, giving us x squared divided by 0.5 is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the minus 11, multiplying the 0.5 to the other side and also taking a square root gives us a number like x is equal to 3.33 times 10 to the minus six. We want to check it by dividing by 0.5 and times in by 100 and it's not even near 1%. So the check here is good. Any questions on that so far? Because that is good, that means that that X is our hydroxide concentration here. Again, not our H plus concentration. So that means that the hydroxide would equal 3.33 times 10 to the minus six, allowing us to calculate the POH of that. Um, it's the log of 3.33 minus six. Giving us a POH of 5.48. Remembering that we know it's basic at this point. If you were mixed up or something, you thought that was pH, it should not make sense to you. So to get to our pH at this point, pH would be 14 minus 5.48. Giving us a pH at the equivalence point of 8.52 which is basic and what we would predict it to sort of be in that basic range. So this is our equivalence point in this type of titration, basically a two ice table move where we need to do a hydrolysis reaction. Any questions on those steps?
So let's take a look at our titration curve here and see sort of where we're at. And it is sort of making sense. We are obviously reaching our basic equivalence point. So 8.52, yeah. Uh, and we are obviously adding base. So we're increasing the pH as we go through it. Any questions up to there? All right, so obviously we just hit the equivalence point. So that means that we are probably past the equivalence point here. So we're making our move, you know, past the equivalence point uh, part D here. And let's finish up this example here and sort of see where we end up. So we wanna know what is the pH now after we have added a total of 105 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide, which is 0.1 molar to our HNO2, which is also 0.1 molar and 100 milliliters. By the way, as you can see, as I'm doing this problem, it's the same problem, multiple steps along the way. Um, when we talk about the volume, you know, here we're at 105 milliliters. That again is not 105 milliliters from our equivalence point. That's basically 105 milliliters from the start of the titration to where we're at now. So um, sometimes people think when they have problems like this where there's multiple steps, you keep adding the volume to the previous step and you don't. So here it's kind of like you opened it up, you stopped at 80 milliliters for part B, you opened it up from the beginning, stopped at a, whatever it was, 100 milliliters for part C, open it up from the beginning, stopped at a total of 105 milliliters added for part D. So um, sort of each of these sort of steps in these problems are kind of like starting from the beginning, opening it up and stopping at that particular volume typically. You typically don't continuously add the volume from one step to the next unless it tells you to do so. So uh, obviously we are past the equivalence point. We know because we just did the equivalence point and we would have our reaction that's taking place. Now uh, we'll get the same guy at the end. All right, so uh, obviously we're gonna do moles just like we did before. So our, our nitrous acid hasn't changed 0.1 times 0.1, uh, 0 0.01 moles. We also now are added a total of 105 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide. That gives us 0 0.0105 moles and zero. Because we're past the equivalence point, what we end up seeing at this point is our nitrous acid is the limiting reagent as we would expect. We have plenty of our sodium hydroxide we're adding. So the change actually here is going to be our nitrous acid. That means that as we would expect, since we are past the equivalence point, we have used up all of the acid we started with. We got some moles of this guy left over and we got this guy left over. Total volume at this point is 100 milliliters of acid we started with. We added 105 milliliters of the base. So we're just about five milliliters past the equivalence point. 0 0.205 liters, but we are going to convert it back into molarity here. Gives us uh, 0 0.00244 molar. And for the other guy, molar. Any questions on the ice table here? Okay. So uh, if we look and see what we got left, we got sodium hydroxide, we got some sodium nitrite. These two things first off are not related to each other. So we have the sodium nitrite, which will go through hydrolysis as we saw at the equivalence point, but between the sodium nitrite and the sodium hydroxide, even though this guy will go through hydrolysis and produce hydroxide, this is a much stronger base. 
So because this is the stronger base, the major contributor, we just go with this guy at this point in the titration. That means really that number is our hydroxide concentration. And that allows you to go right into your POH. That's going to give you minus the log of 0 0.00244, looking like a 2.61 POH, pH being 14 minus our 2.61, giving us a 11.39 as our pH at this point which is, you know, what we would kind of expect to happen at this point since we are past the equivalence point. We're just dumping base in there basically, right? So at this point, we're just dumping, you know, hydroxide in there. So we would expect a pretty good jump in pH and be pretty basic at this point. Any questions on that calculation there? So if we just kind of look at our picture, you know, we're moving, you know, way up there. We we're at eight something. So now we're at what it was 11.9 or three, nine, right? And if I drew this better, we'd probably be leveling off at this point. So again, a fairly good jump on the uh, pH scale there, just going about five milliliters past the equivalence point from 100 milliliters to like 105 milliliters a pretty good jump in the pH. Any questions on titrations, how to do calculations? Obviously questions like this, being able to calculate the pH at any point along the titration curve for those three types of titration curves we talked about, obviously you would be responsible for. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, we will stop here today for this part of our titration talk.